Hello everyone, this is Blake, WartsDB71, back for probably a pretty quick video. It's kind of a follow-on video to the Opus One uh, record label, as you can tell in the title below. Uh, so, this is in response to Andrew's response to my original Opus One video. Uh, Andrew, great to see that, that you found... Uh, couple of Opus One records and uh, love that Bar Phillips one. I uh, would love to have that in my collection. Haven't snagged that one yet, but uh, I'm on the lookout. So what I'd like to do is, uh, uh, I, I don't think I got a chance to show when I had the lights off and was showing the uh, fluorescent covers for the Opus One label. Um, if you didn't catch that, look back a couple of videos, or maybe it was the very last video that I've done, uh, and you get you'll get some understanding of what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I showed a bunch of uh, Opus One covers and I might have mentioned the inserts but I'm not sure that I showed any and I asked Andrew did any of his uh, releases have the inserts included and he said no. Uh, so what I want to do is I just wanted to show some of the cool inserts that you can uh, find in Opus One records. So um, first off we have an Opus One release uh, playing in the background. I um, don't know if you can read this, but what we have is Howl's uh, imp Improvisation on the Overtone series, 1977. And so that's what you're hearing in the background. Um, sounds much better with headphones, but uh, you know, we'll do what we can. Anyway, this is catalog number 53. Um, this one does not have any inserts in it, unfortunately. But I've got, um, one, two, three, four, five. I got six here, uh, that have some pretty cool inserts, and I just really want to show them, just really to show Andrew and anybody else that's digging for, um, Opus One Records, that if you have a chance to get, you know, one out of two that's the same, look inside and make sure you get the, uh, get the paperwork. So I'll just flip some covers up here, uh, which I don't normally do. Uh, I like to talk about what I'm showing, but uh, this time the focus is on the insert. So this one has uh, a catalog here. Um, and for the most part, the catalogs also are printed in fluorescent inks as well. So this is a catalog that came out um, with issue number 27 so it has a lot of detailed information about each of the, the releases um, interestingly enough the way that uh, uh, they put their catalogs together they did it alphabetically by the composer so um, the the numbers are, are kind of kind of wonky. You can't just run down the numbers and, and see what you're looking for. So this is a really cool cover and when this fluoresces you get some glowing lights here in the filament and glowing lights here man. It's awesome. It really is awesome. So this is uh, issue number 36 and it has a different catalog that opens this way. Uh, again, uh, since it's a relatively low number, the catalogs are, are pretty detailed and uh, short, of course. I mean, there were only maybe about 40 releases at that point. Uh, this is a cool gatefold. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they did a gatefold on this one. It only has one LP, uh, but in one of the openings, there's a slew of stuff in here. So I'm going to show this to you. Uh, pull out these pieces and you'll get a sense for what you can find in here. So here's an advertisement for a release number 17. Uh, this one happens to be, I don't know, this one happens to be catalog number 21. Uh, then Peter Maxwell Davies. Uh, an advertisement for a release of his on the Opus One label, of course. And then a wicked <laughs> tri-fold catalog. Uh, 
again printed in uh, fluorescent inks. And you get a sense for, uh, let's see if it'll focus, for the type of information that, that's on here. Uh, it's not focusing very well today. It's the light. Uh, Dave, uh, <laughs> David Sequoia Flame, you can now quit sending up all of this rain from Florida. Uh, we've had massive amounts of rain uh, the past three or four days, and it looks like it's going to continue for a while. Um, another release here. Uh, this one's catalog number 33. And this also has a lot of interesting inserts. Uh, so we'll start with an advertisement for issue number 40. Um, this one's an advertisement for number 45. Uh, both of those are single sided. Then we have uh, <laughs> a slip of information that got stuck in there. And then another version of the catalog. So up through 1979. Um, again, very, very detailed and inf inf informative information. Um, Andrew also asked uh, in some chat comments um, about an online listing of, of all of the releases for Opus One. I have not found one either. Uh, the Discog site has a lot of them. I have a, you know, I have these little catalog inserts, and I also have the Canfield Classical Guide that lists almost all of them. Um, so maybe uh, in my free time, uh, which I have a lot of, I'll type up a list and uh, get it out because I think I think it would be good to uh, to have a list out on the web. Uh, showing all, all of the different releases. Now this uh, catalog number 35 um, it has uh, a, a cool version of the catalog that I like. Uh, this one is up through 1978. Um, again three pages of stuff. Number two, Mr. Barr Phillips. Yes, I'm a little jealous, but I'll keep searching. And um, well, a couple more. Uh, this is catalog number 28 and comes with and then another copy of this catalog so I have two of these um, so Andrew if you run out of luck let me know send me your address and I'll mail you this catalog since I have two of those and the last one uh, here, really cool, <laughs> really cool recording. Uh, let's see, this has a lot of cool things in it. Um, this one does not have a catalog, uh, but what it does have is some information about the group called the New Hippies, um, who did this recording here. Uh, it's a fold out and then other information again nearly all of this stuff is uh, fluorescent I don't think this one is but percussion group and the last one isn't that cool <laughs> yeah 
So there you go, and that's uh, that's really all I wanted to do was is a follow up on a follow up um, vibing with with Andrew. Just wanted to show some of the the inserts since I don't think I got a chance to show any before, and um, I don't know. Just keep the uh, keep the idea going. Opus One is a really great label. Again, they're pretty tough to find, um, so when you find them, pretty much regardless of cover condition, Andrew. You better pick it up. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, and I'll be back again soon because I want to uh, briefly mention, or briefly and maybe not so briefly, give some thoughts on some uh, some books I've read. So, see you again very soon. Bye bye.